<laughs> hey people, Rogan Puppet. This is draw a neo traditional crow. Enjoy. Right people, how to draw a peony flower. Right, this one's going to be sort of like neo traditional. You know, it's a little bit more detailed. I mean, not overly detailed, but you get a gist. Start with, get yourself a circle. Now this is going to be your centerpiece, that's where most of the detail is going to happen. But what you don't want is it to appear just as a basic circle. So you want to break the shape up and get some interesting things going. So like here I'm going to start with making a base bit. Flick maybe two sides out. And on top of this just bring in semicircle shapes, so half circles, just different sizes. Come across to connect them. And after that, I want a bit to overlap and I want it to turn over. So I'm going to create this curve here, bring this curve in lower. And when I get to here, I'm going to twist this round and start making my little semicircles coming off this way. So you see, it looks like this bit bends over it, it kind of like comes over the top. This side, I'm going to bring up and I'm going to turn this one the other way. So I'm going to come up S curve that way. Bring the line from that same point we started. Start bringing in your semicircle with different sizes. Filling up that gap. I'm going to have one just on the inside, just here, just filling up this space in between. Maybe one just here. And the inside. I'm going to do these like repeat kind of sort of curved lines, just coming around to the centre part. So you've got your centerpiece, and then all you got to do is start working off of this. You know, and the trick is not to get it too, I mean, you can have this on where it slightly is rounding up, but I like mine to be very free flowing. So I'm going to come off here, make an S curve. You know, the S curve is key to these designs, I think, because it just really helps bend your flower leaves, or your petals rather. So we're going to S curve just down here. And then what I do, come from the bottom. Curve out, start curving your semicircles up, and when you get near the end, bring it out to a point. Like so. And then off of that, see here, bring semicircles. And I like not all of my not all the petals, but some of them to have this dip in the center. So you come down, you make a dip, and you curve back up and it goes almost into a separate petal almost. I'm going to curve these around and then have that curve back under there. Now, always make sure they kind of come out kind of wider or something, you know. Just be interested in how you play with them. Going to have this one come out. It's going to curve over there. Curve off the bottom. Just create those same circles. I'm going to get towards the edge. Make it sort of spike at the end. Bring the semicircles, different sizes, just putting in that gap there. And we got this one. Give me a curve here. And I'm going to do like a double curve on this one. So I'm going to bring in a curve there. It's going to curve out. And this is going to curve back into the leaf. But when it gets here, we're going to curve off of it. See? Let's create semicircles. Come over this. Then when we get here, I'm going to curve back and we're going to do the same again. So this is going to curve out, and kind of into it. For this one, quite similar to the other side. Now I'm going to curve this one out. Same technique, just curve out, same circles, spike the edge. Different size circles. When you get to that bottom bit, just going to curve up there. Okay, this one so it seems like it's gonna come around it. I'd be quite rough with this, just kind of like get the flicker, you know, like with pencil to really kind of bring out the air uh, shapes. Off the top here, I have one come up the top, I think. So I'll bring up the shape. We can 
kind of go behind that one. You can keep adding these all day, you know, you can keep add a few like, behind it if you want. Do that one quite similar to that, does that look? Nah. Sometimes you're going to add it and you kind of look at each one and you're like, sometimes you're going to be like, no, it just doesn't work there. That shape just doesn't work for that one for me. And what you're going to do on the inside of these, create long lines, get up the edge, and just bring back the line coming down. Just keep doing these randomly just throughout on the inside parts. So just bring in a line, curve it, curve around the edge, come back down. See so like here, just curve out, come back. Uh, one or two per sort of like leafy bit. And do the trick. You know, you can have varying different lengths, and it ain't got to be the same length. And most of the night, you can add to your leaves in the backgrounds. I'm going to keep my leaves quite simple for this one. So just a curve, and then a curve the other way. Another group of three in this part. Link. On there. On there. Two there. Yeah, I quite like that. I think that kind of works. Now what I'm going to do is get my Sharpie. You can get your normal standard pen, you know, whatever you want, you know. I'm just going to go over in this quickly. I'm just going to do all that line work we just done. And then we can add some detail bits afterwards. Now the only bit I'm not going to do with the Sharpie is these lines here. I'm going to do these in a thinner one. I don't want them thick. I'll take time with this angle, guys, quick as I do. I well, know I do kind of just draw these lines in pretty quick sometimes. But you know, as when I go to speed, they're not always perfect. You know, if I took my time, they'd be a lot better. See, that's the bold lines in there now. Come back with a fine liner. It's just a uni pin, uh, 0 0.8.
bring those lines. It does make more sense when it's put the uh, shadow in its centre part. Now a little line just down the centre, which one these leaves. Grab all that pencil work. So you can see them nice and clearly. Now what else did happen? It's gonna be some little lines, nothing too much, just little curves, just inside, just randomly. Let's got these done. There we go. And you can add extra little line details, like sort of around the edges and stuff. You know, yeah, I might as well just look a few in, you know. A few of these probably won't see when I colour it, you know, certain bits in. Like if you want here, you could um, just make a little inline curve just here and there. You know, you cut it on the uh, inside interns, just. Inside curve, which is pretty much what I'm going to do, but I'm going to shade down from that. You can do that on the inside of each one of these, which I might as well do because I'm going to curve off. I'm going to shade off them in a way, and then do the top section like a different color. So you can see we've got those little detail lines in there. You know, you can add like little dots, you know, you can add pattern work. You know, I've seen a few of these that's really cool and they sort of like use like, you know, sort of Japanese patterns. You know, like repeated patterns that like come through here. And it'd be like, you know, as you imagine like, say, like the uh, Pentagon one or, you know, one is sort of like the cross ones. And it'd be as if you sort of cut out and just pasted it into all these sections. So like the exact same direction, which gives it a really cool look. I'm not going to do that, but that's an option you can do if you want. But yeah, just bring the little lines just on this last one. In a bit there. So I mean, you can keep adding little details. You can add sort of like you know lines in here, sort of like showing the direction, you know, little dots and bits. But I'm going to keep it just like this because I'm really liking how this is going. So I'm going to grab me my brush markers. You can use whatever markers you want, or paints, or pens. You know, don't feel like you have to use the same, just apply what you see me doing to the medium you use. So if you see me shade out with these and you've got pencil, just shade out. If you see me brushing this and you've got water paints, just keep that same kind of technique. It's very similar. These are just Windsor Newton brush markers. Now what I'm going to do is just bring in my black on the inside of those lines. Then I'm going to come in. A dark brown and 
fade this down into a red. I'm going to do this for all these inside bits. So this bit, this bit, this bit, this bit, this bit, this bit, that bit. That bit you're not going to quite see because you don't get enough of it. Right, and that bit, and that bit, and that bit. It's that exact same technique. So just across that top part, just bring in the black. Now use a side to side motion. Side to side motion is very, very good for blending out. So put in the black like that, and just work over that edge side to side. And come in with your red side to side. No. You get a nice smooth blend out. So I'm just going to keep coming over this edge. Take your time, D, be careful. I'm pretty quick with this, and I probably will go over my lines a few bits. This one's just a pro marker. You know, they're good for solid bulk colouring, and if you're using the uh, blending technique you see me use with a blender, you can blend them out. But all in all, I do prefer brush markers, you know, of any kind as opposed to basic. So Copic, I prefer Flex, I prefer Tree, I prefer Windsor Newton brush markers, I prefer, you know, as long as they're brush markers, I really like, and I prefer them being alcohol based. You know, I've seen some people do some nice ones like the water ones and stuff, but it's just not really for me, I don't, I'm not a fan of them. You know, but it's probably goes my style, I like my stuff to look really nice and smooth, you know, and clean. You know, the, the water kind of base one sometimes, you know, they can be a bit uneven. You know, which is really cool if you're going for that kind of look. But if you're not going for that look, it's annoying. <laughs> so you can see it starts to look really cool as you build it up. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be black here. You can go in from like, you know, reds into a fade out, you know, you can do a solid reds, you can go pinks, purples, greens, blues, browns, oranges, yellows, any colour you want, you know. In fact, I'd be really interested in seeing what kind of colour co uh, color combination you guys come up with, so if you guys do these tutorials, please just send me a picture, you know, go on my Instagram, my Facebook, tag me in it, I love seeing what you guys do, you know. And never ever sort of like be like, oh, you know, like it's not good enough sort of thing. You know, I just, doesn't matter what your skill level is, I like seeing it. You know, so do send me your artwork so I can see. Let's put in some black. A lot of people ask me like, where you can get these markers from, you know, um, I'm going to try have it set up so I'll have a link in my thing, description, but YouTube can sometimes be a bit funny about that, so I just need to get confirmation from them that I'm allowed to do that, you know, I don't want them taking down my videos because it breaks their bylaws or whatever, so you might see it in time, there might be a link in the description, if not, check out Amazon, you know, just put in like Windsor and brush markers or brush markers, see what comes up with, you know, there's loads of brands out there, you know, they're not overly expensive. Let's give them a try. Right, so that's that colour in there. Then what I'm going to do, on the top part, I'm going to work an orange from the side. I'm going to fade this into yellow. So I get this really cool highlight in the centre of each one of them.
and just come up from each side like so. And flick in your yellow. Uh, on this kind of paper, yellow comes out kind of like golden, which I kind of like. But it's cool when it comes out blinging yellow as well, especially for these kind of like designs. You know, really strong yellow is really good for flowers. Just like so. And then. Where's my brush? I don't know what I have used. So I'm just trying to work out what colour to do the centerpiece. Been a bit indecisive about it today. Just hang a blue, blue could go up nice against it, but then it kind of goes away from that. Mm. Maybe a bit of pink. Let me see if I want that pink. Red into pink. So to start with, I'm just going to put in a basic pink coat. And if this is a normal paper, it'll come out you know, a bit lighter. But I quite like this kind of look. It's a nice little style. You know, I like you know, the toned down colours, you know, when it's kind of got that retro look like it's been aged. I do like that. So what I do is I put a base layer of like, you know, this pink on and then I come down using red from the top or the bottom and the side of jet and just do like a nice little fade out. I think I'm going to do these little bits here in between and maybe blue and then my leafy bits in green. Also as weird, but I don't normally use the block end. I don't feel you get as much control over it. Uh, I suppose it is handy for getting larger areas. Done in a second. Do be careful when going over black, you know, because you go to black too much, you will drag the colour down. You basically can get like a zoom a bit into the marker, and then maybe the next couple of sort of strokes, so it just come out in that. It can be really annoying sometimes, you know, you get a really horrible dark streak where you don't want it.
stack one of it. And look how they're missed that. So that's my basic pink in there, but let me quickly just... Toss my red in there. Me orange. And me yellow. Well, I'm looking at it, I don't know if it actually needs it or not. Hmm. Choices, choices, choices. I'll tell you what, actually, I'm not gonna, because I like the way it looks. You know, I was originally gonna put like a red fade down from the top, but what I'm gonna do actually is put a red line. Then we could the insert shape of the petal. So near that edge, just bringing in that red line, just in that same distance apart, away from the edge. Yeah, I like that. That was a better choice. See, sometimes you make choices mid-design works out for the best. Just got to flick in a little bit of black just at the bottom of each of these leaves. Draw it in Blender and go into green. And the green blend into maybe a bit of orange at the ends. Green in. Going to light green now. I'm going to light green because this light green is more close to orange, so it makes for a better transition. Orange at the top, and just plug that green back into it. Or as you can do, what you're gonna do here, just get yellow. And wipe the yellow into it. a bit fade out into this purple grey so just do like a colour circle pretty much just fading and in the centre going yellow and grab me baby blue Colour in each one of these parts here.
there we go. And that's it. Simple as that. That is how to draw a peony, peony, however you want to say it, flower. It's near traditional Japanese style, but uh, so, well, kind of near traditional Japanese, kind of like near traditional Americana, a little bit, I suppose. It's got a bit like a lot sort of circus vibe to it with the colours. A bit royal. But I like it. I hope you like it. Check out my videos, comment, subscribe, yada yada yada. I'm a broken puppet, and I'll see you next time. Peace.